welcome back. Today I'm going to do a patchwork and quilting video. I started filming this oh, a few months ago now and the footage was all sitting there ready for the next stage and I had to do a test piece for the idea that I had so just very briefly. So if I just zoom in here I've drawn out what I want to do the background of this quilt is made up of four patch squares and large patches because I really wanted to show off the fabrics on these large squares. I wanted to do something a bit more spring-like, summer-like, beautiful, lighter fabric, something a little bit more optimistic and that. My original idea was for these larger patches to have embroidery on them, actually done by me, and I thought how awesome would it be to use these vintage iron-on transfers that I've got. I had this idea, a friend of mine at a quilt group, she had got some unbleached linen with some transfers printed on them. And then I thought, I used to have a shop and I have a gazillion million load of iron-on transfers that I still need to do something with. I bought some fabric last year that I just wanted to get because I just loved it so much. How about I do a mashup of the two? This was one of the ones that I found and I was gonna use. And this was probably even intended to be somewhere in the middle, I don't know, might have been like the medallion but I needed to get on and embroider these pieces before I start making up the whole of the quilt so that I'd got all the bits ready to play with and I thought oh yeah I can do that that won't take too long so I did a test piece and I absolutely loathe it I'm going to show you the test piece this is the transfer that one we were just looking at so I've ironed it on it works pretty well it irons on very well you can see what you're doing which is not bad considering it's probably from the earliest is the 1930s it could be as late as the 1950s and then I thought oh if I use cotton perle I can introduce different colors based on the other fabrics um obviously this is blue and I just I just don't like it I don't think it would be improved if I finish this piece. I don't think I'll feel any better about it. For this quilt, I will finish these and I'll do something else with them. So this fabric is pretty much out of the picture anyway. How far I've got then is working out that that doesn't work. I don't, I don't like the way it looks, but I do like the other idea that I've had which is to use rescued embroidery, which is what this is. So I've got, this was a central medallion out of a tablecloth. You can't really tell on camera, or there might not be too many. This had marks that wouldn't come out with washing on it. So I've ironed on some pieces of bonderweb on the back, and I will carefully cut this out and then take out the middle part of it. And this is going to be this, which actually solves a problem because it means I can alternate between having a large patch and a four patch, a large patch and a four patch, and all the rest of it just go with that and then make the medallion on top just in the embroidery. The medallion is also going to have this in it. This is from a different tablecloth, can you believe that? So that's what's going to go in the middle. How cute is that? And it's also got the blue because the other blues are this slightly more turquoisey than that spotty one I just showed you. So I'll show you the other fabrics. So this is one of the ones that I wanted to showcase the how pretty it is, but it's quite a big print. So if I cut that into squares, you'd lose quite a lot of it and you'd end up with very plain areas in places so I've got that one, some paisleys, three different colours of paisley, some stripes, I thought there was a blue stripe but I don't know where it's gone, the rosy one in a different colourway, these very bright blue roses which I might use the back instead. I think those are all the background fabrics and these are the ones for doing the squares so I'll quickly flick through so we've got roses, green, green with a sort of lilac -y lavender colour on, green there, again I might use the back, green, green, pink and then this was a strange turquoise colour that I thought would work quite well. Smaller bouquets of roses, I think that's it. I think this is going to be absolutely gorgeous and I am so happy that I did a test piece of what I thought was going to work and to find out that it doesn't. I've cut out another one of those baskets so look at that on the 
on that background doesn't that look pretty so now all of the squares can be cut out um, because I can use this embroidery instead of having to embroider it myself it's also a time constraint if I'd have liked it and gone ahead with it to execute it properly and to get all the right pieces embroidered there are 18 plain squares now two of them we wouldn't have done because they'll be in the middle so that would leave me with 16 plain squares that all need something embroidering on them this way I can iron these on and stitch them on and then the last bit of the embroidery will be the four squares in the middle but I can choose what I'm doing as I go along so that it looks right so I've also had a few ideas about making pretty corners so I really like this corner and I thought if I had this in each corner of the quilt as well it would look really really beautiful so that's what I'm doing I'm making a beautiful flower strewn spring summer quilt this is the first time I have ever cut into a tablecloth I didn't actually have anything wrong with it I don't think but it's going to be reused and will make the most beautiful quilt and I'm so excited I can't wait for you to see it so if you were doing this you could do the whole square here of all one fabric I am not going to do that I don't think it'll give the effect I want so I'm going to go ahead and I've already counted up how many squares that I want to use. I am going to do two the same here. So there'll be a square here, square here, four patch, four patch, and then the motif. And I think it'll be okay. I don't think it's gonna to be too confusing because this is pretty definite embroidery. It's nice and bright, it's clear, it reads really well, and it's so pretty. So you might have noticed when I showed you through the fabrics as well that I had quite a lot of green ones. I'm not going to pull them all out and show you again, but um, on the planning side of this, I think I want to make sure that each of these four patches is another colour and then two green ones. So it doesn't matter which way round I mark that out. And if I sound vague, I am looking for a pen or a pencil or something and I can't find one. Let's use some coloured pencils because this will help keep track of the cutting and help me you know, be a little bit more organised with what I put where. Normally I would just cut everything out and sort of hope for the best but where I want it to look a specific way I think this is going to help quite a bit. So I'm literally going to just colour in this. Now this is at the moment it's um, six of the blocks wide and I think that will work out okay size wise. These squares are going to be made out of five inch strips, so I'm going to go and cut all this in a minute. So the finished size of this four patch will be nine inches because of the seam allowances. They're going to be um, nine inches square when they finish, so I will cut these plain ones that aren't me pieced at all. They will be nine inch squares as well. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six times nine inches. It's going to be 54 inches wide. If I get through this and I think, oh, that's a little bit narrow, I could add, because I've put in filler filler blocks along the top so far, I could always do the same on each side as well. So I could add a little bit more, more there. I could do a border, you know, there's so many things. So at the moment we're just going for 54 inches wide. And this will give us more of an idea of what it's going to look like. I am just going to ignore the top and the bottom at the moment because we're going to work on this main body of the quilt. Now, where I wanted corners, do you remember I was talking about corners? I'm going to have a plain one here, but a squares here. So I have to think quite carefully about what to do with the corners. What would probably make the most sense would be to not put a motif on here, but to have, you know, like a corner there. I, I don't know how that's going to work at the moment. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's going to work at all. I don't know whether to have some plain borders so I could put the corners on the borders and then we're not interfering with this kind of, I don't know, what would you call it, flower strewn quilt. I, I think the easiest to keep track of, the easiest design decision to make would be to have a plain border around here. Even if I've got loads and loads of different squares, first of all, or whatever it happens to be, but to have some space between this area here and the end of the quilt so I can put that embroidery in. But today what we're gonna worry about <laughs> is just cutting out and starting this. 
and I will start making up some of these four patch blocks. I choose what I want for the middle, stitch it together and then put the embroidery on top of it and actually applique that on while it's that size because I think that would be so much easier than waiting until the end but that's why I need to keep track of it. So I'm just going to show you how to cut out squares if you're using a long roll. I would use chalk but I wouldn't want to use normally I use like pen or anything like that. It will mark on this really really easily and, and uh, I don't want to do that so because it's pale fabrics. Um, the first thing I do is I trim off the salvage so if you've got two rules or a square and a rule so I want this nine nine inches wide so you can either cut using this and scoot it along I don't like doing that myself it leads to inaccuracies or you can measure the four inches here so that's literally one two three four and you line up the line with the freshly cut edge that you've just done this measures five anyway so you can put that on there take that one away and cut along there the easiest method is to actually have two rulers or rules i know i know a lot of people won't they'll only have one and that's absolutely fine but if you did have two you would line this four inch line up with the cut edge again exactly the same as with the square put the other one next to it and then start cutting and then you know you're cutting a nine inch strip and then you follow exactly the same principle going across the fabric that way and we'll end up with four squares because this fabric's double so I did some already out of the other colorway so I've got four of these and then I'm going to cut up four of those and remember I only need 18 at this stage so four is ample but this was the chosen fabric mostly to do the big squares on this was the one I really really wanted to feature and there's a bit of me wondering if I should just use that and use the paisleys and the stripes for something else or even piece them together as a backing fabric. Basically I've got far too much fabric and I'm not really sure what I was thinking but I will carry on just cutting what I need today. At least I've made a decision and I will decide what I'm going to do with the other the other fabrics so I'll just carry on cutting out stuff okay I've done some cutting I haven't done all of it I'm trying to pace myself my desk is not the right height for cutting stuff out at unfortunately so I have to just cut a little bit so I didn't do the stripes <laughs> once it they're having a little rest over there they've been ironed I will cut them because I will so what I did was I ended up cutting out the the big squares three at a time because it just makes it easier so this is what I've got so far and then I've got four of these I'll just turn those around the right way it's actually really coming together now it's um I really like it I love the color combinations this is so kind of subtle and pretty and pastel-y and conjures up oh I don't know beautiful summer dresses and sitting in a meadow. So the strips, I have sorted them into greens and colours. Now, these two, I'm going to look at them on camera to see if they read as green or purple or lavender or whatever that colour is. And I think they read as purple. That one definitely does. That one does too. So I think that will be my rule for the green the green squares in the in the design as they will just be green there won't be any other color on them so I've got three prints here this one um, this one's really pretty and then this one this is the wrong side of this and that's the right side see the right side is quite dark so I'm going to actually use the wrong side of this one and I think that fits in a lot better with that they all look a similar depth of color rather than that so to do a very simple four patch, what you need to do is have your, your strip fabric. So let's just take this one, for example, and we're going to stitch right side to right side. Um, so I'll just put a little pin in it. And I suggest you use either an off-white thread for this or a pale gray. It works really well for blending in with all different colors. Use something that will tone with all of the fabrics you're using so it just won't show, you know, even if the stitches come 
a little bit wide or whatever you won't see it. Go through and pin together um, a whole group of these. So this is the one, I really like this one, I want this to go definitely in the middle and I really really like this pink so this is going to be one of my four patches for the middle to go with that rosy fabric that I showed you. Once these are stitched together we'll press them open so then you'll have a piece of fabric like that and we're literally going to cut chunks off them and then straight away you've got two squares stitched together and that's how you do it. I'm going to go and do this and then I'll start stitching together. So because I want to get to doing the centre part, I need to choose the other fabric to do the, the other four patch block. I think I'm going to use a pink and I think I'm going to use this one. So I just need to make another block of that. Obviously when you're coming to do this yourself, just keep cutting five inch slices off of the strip pieces until you run out. I'm actually going to go and change this blade, it's driving me crazy. So while you're at the machine, if you've cut an extra few like I did, just stitch them all together and then you've got some more to go on the pile. And we just need to iron them all open. I've got two really nice four patches that are the same kind of colours but they're obviously different fabrics and just for the centre I think that's kind of nice. I am going to have to um, probably mix and match the patterns together. I'll see when I finish cutting them. There's probably going to be odd ones and I don't want to waste anything. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make another four patch block but bigger. So I need to use these as the two four patches in the four patch box and then use two of the squares that I've already got that were cut out as nine inch squares. So I think I'm going to use this one and try and get it around the right way. Okay so on here I've got the green going this way and in the middle square I've got that there and that there. So that's right. Brilliant. And then we'll just put this one here. I think I miscalculated. I think these need to be bigger than nine inches, but I've already cut a load, so that's really annoying. Because I have so many different fabrics, I think I'm gonna be okay. So I need to cut some more fabric. Wow, lucky I noticed before I cut everything out, isn't it? So they won't be wasted. They will be used for something else. I'm just a little bit annoyed that having shown you how to do the cutting using two rolls and all of that stuff. Anyway, moving swiftly on. So on here, we're gonna do exactly how we did it before. Except this is only half an inch. I'm just gonna get four more, which is great. So no, no problem there, it's gonna be okay. I mean, I could use those other squares as the board around the edge. You know, I could even piece another quilt and do the sizes different. There's so many things I could do. So we have two nine and a half inch squares and we have two nine and a half inch four patches. Oh look, they're the same size. So now we're going to make a new four patch block out of four bigger patches. Look at that. This bit is a little bit one of those things that you need to keep track of so it's really easy to get your bits turned around on this or going in the wrong direction 
So I need to stitch these two together and these two together first of all. How I do it to keep track of it, I always put in a red pin going in the direction so that points towards the sewing machine. So I'm going to stitch from this direction. So I put a red pin in there and then I know which seam I'm going to stitch, which direction, everything. Do exactly the same again with this one. So I'm going to take these off and stitch these together. stitched it all and ironed it all nice and flat this is going to be the four in the middle so I've got a giant four patch and it is time to put on some embroidery so here we have some embroidery this is the piece I want to use in the middle so this has all been ironed onto bonder web so this wasn't quite round so if I just start pulling it out till it naturally wants to sit flat that's sitting nice and flat there and it is slightly wider that way and then I want to use one of these baskets of flowers. Oh, that one fits really well. They're, they're all slightly different. This one's at a weird angle. I'm probably going to iron the basket on first so I can make sure that I can sort of pull this out the way a little bit. So I want to sort of centre this up as best I can. So I think this is what the centre is going to be. Right, I'm going for it. Um, I've got a reasonably hot iron. So I've got to get through the embroidery and the stuff itself. It's starting to stick in places. I'm going to just spot press things here. I'm using some sort of bonder web stuff, but I don't like what that's doing to the embroidery. So I'm going to go and get a wet cloth because I'm squashing the embroidery. So I've had a bit of a practice and I just wanted to do a little recap on how to applique something onto a piece of fabric so in this case saved embroidery the first thing I did was made sure I had a new needle um, a reasonably fine needle so something less than a 14 because you don't want to leave holes and even when you use a fine needle you can end up with punch marks in the fabric now this was the first one I did and I didn't have the zigzag set quite right I've also serviced my machine because I don't want to get any anything caught in this and it's it's um has a tendency to drag it through the uh, feed dogs which you, you really don't want that so I've cleaned it I've oiled it it's got a new needle and then when you put it all back together if if you can do that if if not obviously go with what you've got I've set it to one on the top thread so on the tension and that means that the thread goes all the way around to the back of the fabric. I'm using white in the underneath in the bobbin and I'm using an off-white um, or an ecru on the top because that's closest to the background fabric of what I'm stitching on so I just want it to disappear. A good place for me to start I think is here right into this corner here and so position the work and I'm sorry you can't see any clearer. I don't have a clear presser foot. If you have a clear presser foot, I suggest you use one. It'll make your life a lot easier. Fortunately for me, I've been doing this for so long that I've found workarounds for a, a normal foot. But rather than just starting sewing straight away, make sure your thread tails are long enough that they're not gonna get pulled back up. Put the presser foot down and hand crank into position and then I can lift that up and you can push a presser foot a little bit out of the way to make sure it's in the right position. And then start stitching reasonably slowly and we're gonna stop on this little lilac flower here. And if you don't think you can stop in the right place, stop just a stitch or two before and hand crank it. And then I can have a good look to see what's going on under here. So I need to take a couple of stitches across before I come back round. Okay, while this is on the opposite side to where we started, now's a good time to pull this thread through so we don't stitch over it at the end. So we just give it a little tug. You should be able to get the other thread to come all the way through. So as long as you do that before you get to the end, and then I'll show you what to do. Let 
when you get to the end, leave a decent thread tail thing on there. And then, I'm sorry this is white on a pale background, but we'll find the last bit that we stitched, which is this one. And just pull that through. And you can tell it's the last one we stitched because this one's got stitched in just as we went past. That's why you do it when it's on the opposite side of the work. So it's already pulled through and it's already in place. And I don't tie them off. I used to, but actually by the time you finish doing the piece of work, they'll be held in place anyway. And um, sometimes it's, it's so hard to pull them through that it's not gonna come undone. So that's the back of it. I don't know if you can see and that's the front so that piece is done completely and the the one other thing I would say is if you want to have a go at doing this um which I hope you do give yourself a bit more of a chance than I did I've made these margins here really really narrow and where some of this embroidery is quite raised it is quite difficult to stitch around it so I would say give yourself a bit more a bit more space to do that sewing because you you don't really notice it when it's on you just don't you don't notice that it's got like a border around it at all so yeah give yourself a little bit more space than I have well I finally finished this piece and it's taken me probably about an hour and a half to stitch it all on but I knew it was going to take a long time because I've got to stitch all the way around the outside, the inside and then all the way around this one. And it's the only one I have to do that amount of sewing on. And I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm so pleased with how it's come out. I'll just show you the back and see if you can see the outline of the stitching on here. There's the basket. And also, if you're ever doing anything like this, it's a good idea to turn it over and just double check that you have actually stitched around everything because it's easier to do it when it's this size than when it's a whole quilt and you realize there's a bit that's not been done. I've also stitched on these ones. You saw me doing this one here and then I've ironed on all of these ones. I've all got flowers and things on ready to stitch but honestly having spent that amount of time sitting in a funny position I'm not going to do these today but I am at the stage where I can choose what's going to go on here next so yesterday I did this which looks it's not bunting these are all squares of the four patches so they just need cutting apart they're all chain stitched together at the moment and I chose to leave them like that so I knew that these were the good ones because some of the ones where I've been trimming the strips to start with it's so close it, you know I might have thought that they were spare spare bits and pieces so I left these all together so I'm going to go and iron all these and then have a little think about what's going to go on next so what I could do is do another panel like a small panel here do and choose another four patch stitch those together and put that on and then do the same at the top or I could do that sideways and do it at either side and so it would make a long piece and then choose the next four to go along the top and the bottom and just keep building it out. I'd love to be in a situation where I could lay it all out somewhere and choose you know which squares go where but honestly I want to mix it up a bit in the what I'm sewing and what I'm not so I'm going to just take it by different pieces you know do do different blocks um, and then that way I'll keep interested in it and um, it won't be too much physically because this is hard work. But look how pretty this is. We have a central medallion. It looks so gorgeous on camera. It looks even more gorgeous in real life. I love how well it's sitting all together. It needs pressing now as well just to sort out the you know any wrinkles and that there, there aren't very many because it was ironed on first of bonder web but isn't this this so cute it's so pretty <laughs> so and now i'm wishing i'd found some crinoline ladies to put in here as well on pieces but they're so hard to find and in the right colors but anyway this is how far i've got and i am going to go and iron lots and lots of four patch blocks and give this a bit of a press <laughs> Here 
it is. This is the main body of the quilt top. I hope you agree that it's absolutely gorgeous and I really, really love it. I'm gonna have to put it away for a while now so that I can do some stuff in my workroom, but I shall come back and show you when I start doing the quilting. I hope you've really enjoyed this sort of foray into pretty spring and summer like colours and reclaimed embroidery. Thanks as always for joining me and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!